Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hasha Ali Khan. So now I'm going to start the problems on ratio analysis. Last three videos I have explained you complete uh, introduction part of uh, ratio analysis. I have explained you about the meaning of the term ratio analysis. What do you mean by ratios? What do you mean by ratio analysis? What are the advantages? What are the limitations? Classification of ratios? All these things I have explained in the very first video on introduction. So watch that video to get the complete knowledge about the topic ratio analysis. Then second, third uh, part I have explained you about the different uh, classification of ratios into liquidity ratio, leverage or capital structure ratio, activity or turnover ratio and lastly profitability ratios. So if you are completely I mean proficient on all the formulas then only you can be able to understand the problems. The problems are dependent on the formulas. So before going to solve the problems you must be fully acquainted with the formulas of ratio analysis. So I suggest you to watch the first three videos completely not once twice thrice then you come to these problems you will definitely enjoy learning the problems of ratio analysis otherwise it will be very much difficult the whole problems depend on the formulas so if you have not watched i suggest you to visit the playlist of my channel select the subject financial statement analysis select the topic ratio analysis watch the first three parts then come to this now before starting the problems I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. So take a hard copy printout, keep it ready before start watching the problems. First problem I am reading out. From the following particulars calculate current ratio and acid test ratio. Acid test ratio means quick ratio. So cash in hand 3000, cash at bank 65000, bills receivable 10000, stock 1,20,000. There is a printing mistake in the problem. It is given 11,20,000. Remove that one. It is 1,20,000. Make it 1,20,000. Debtors 80,000. Prepaid expenses 2,000. Sundry creditors 1,20,000. Bills payable 20,000. So we are given the current assets and current liabilities. And we have to find out current ratio and acid test ratio. Acid test ratio means quick ratio now see here. problems on ratio analysis short problems current assets what are the current assets given in the problem and list out and take the total cash in hand 3000 cash at bank bills receivable stock debtors prepaid expense total current assets 280000 current liabilities are only two sundry creditors and bills payable the total is 140000 and quick asset quick asset means current assets minus stock minus prepaid what is the difference between current asset and quick asset? Current assets are those assets which can be converted into cash within a period of one year. Within a period of one year. And quick assets are the those as current assets which can quickly be converted without loss of time, without risk. Without any risk, without loss of time, we can easily convert it into cash quickly. That's why it is called quick assets. The two assets we remove from current assets to get quick assets. So current asset minus stock minus prepaid expenses. Deduct minus stock minus prepaid will get the quick asset. So total current assets are 2,80,000. 2, From 2,80,000 deduct 1,20,000 deduct 2,000. Minus 1,20,000 minus 2,000 158,000 is the quick asset. Now remember the formula. Current ratio. Current ratio expresses the relationship between current assets and current liability. Current assets divided by current liability. This is the formula for current ratio. So current assets are 280,000, current liability are 140,000. So 280,000 divided by 140,000, you will get 2. You will get 2. But it is customary to write down 2 is to 1. What do you mean by this 2 is to 1? The current assets are double the current liabilities. Normally, current liabilities will be paid from current assets only. The fixed assets will not be disposed of to pay the current liability. Current liability will be paid from current assets. So always current assets should be more. Normally the liquidity position is good if the current assets are double the current liabilities. Double the current liability. Here 1,40,000 current liability, 2,80,000 current assets that means double. 
तो टू इज टू वन फॉर एवरी वन रुपी ऑफ करंट लाइब्रिटी वी हैव टू रुपीज ऑफ करंट असेट्स दैट इज द मीन नाउ क्विक रेशो एसिड टेस्ट रेशो और क्विक रेशो द फॉर्मुला इज क्विक असेट्स बाय करंट लाइबिलिटीज तो क्विक असेट्स ऑलरेडी वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड वन लाख फिफ्टी एट थाउजेंड तो वन लाख फिफ्टी एट थाउजेंड बाय करंट लाइब्रिटी वन लाख फोर्टी थाउजेंड यू गेट वन पॉइंट वन थ्री इज टू वन दैट मीन्स फॉर एवरी वन रुपी ऑफ करंट लाइबिलिटी For every one rupee of current liability, we have one point one three of quick assets. So standard current ratio is two is to one. Normal, normal current ratio is two is to one. That means a organization, if it is having current ratio of two is to one, it means the liquidity position is good, satisfactory. If it is less than two, that means the liquidity position is not satisfactory. Similarly, the standard quick ratio is one is to one. One is to one. That means for every one rupee of current liability, we must have one rupee of quick assets. If it is more than one, it will be better. Here it is more than one, one point one three, so it is better. That's it. So this is the explanation of problem number one. Now I am reading out problem number two. From the following particulars, calculate debt equity ratio and proprietary ratio. Two ratios it is asking you. Debt equity ratio and proprietary ratio. First of all, remember the formula for debt equity ratio. long term debts divided by shareholders fund all these formulas i have explained in the first two three videos so if you have watched those two three videos definitely you will have perfect knowledge about the formulas so long term debt divided by shareholders fund what do you mean by long term debt debentures bank loan any other long term loans but in our problem we are given only debentures the debenture is a long term debt you have to remember this not only in this problem in the coming problem long term debt is a deb uh, is debenture is a long term debt the so long term debt is equal to debenture that is given in the problem 3 lakh now shareholders fund we require remember the shareholders fund is equal to equity share capital plus preference share capital plus reserves and surplus minus fictitious assets the fictitious assets are imaginary assets sometimes in the uh, problem in the balance sheet it will be given preliminary expenses discount on issue of shares discount on issue of debentures profit and loss account debit balance these are called fictitious assets some problems it will be given if it is not given ignore it so in our problem there is no fictitious assets we are given equity share capital 5 lakh we are given in the problem preference share capital 3 lakh we are given reserves in the problem 2 lakh we don't have fictitious assets so 10 lakh rupees is the shareholders fund now substitute debt equity ratio is equal to long term debt divided by shareholders fund so 3 lakh divided by 10 lakh 0.3 that means debt is 10% of shareholders fund the significance of this ratio is the debt long term debt of the business is 30% of shareholders fund next proprietary ratio second core ratio it is asking you proprietary ratio the formula for proprietary ratio is net worth by total assets net worth by total assets this is the formula for proprietary ratio net worth what do you mean by net worth shareholders fund shareholders fund or net worth means one and the same already we have calculated shareholders fund 10 lakh so net worth is also 10 lakh now total assets total assets means fixed assets plus current assets in the problem it is given fixed assets 10 lakh current assets 4 lakh so 10 lakh plus 4 lakh 14 lakh rupees are the total assets now proprietary ratio net worth by total assets 10 lakh by 14 lakh 0.71 0.71 that is 71% of the total assets are financed by shareholders fund by shareholders fund that's it so second problem completed now i am reading out the third problem if the net income of simco limited is rupees 1 lakh 22600 after tax at 50% that means the tax applicable to the company is 50% whatever profit the company earns 50% should be paid as tax remaining 50% is profit after tax if 100 rupees the company earns 50% of 100 50 rupees will be paid as tax remaining 50 rupees is profit after tax example example 
whatever earn whatever uh, profit earned 50% will be paid in the form of taxes remaining 50% is profit after tax but in our problem the profit after tax given is 1,22,600 this is the profit after tax rate of tax is 50% that means the tax paid is also 1,22,600 jitna PAT rahenga utna hi tax so profit after tax is 120 to 600 the tax paid is also 120 to 600 because 50 percent we have paid now fixed interest charges is given in the problem 4800 calculate inventory turnover ratio yeah, in interest coverage ratio sorry interest coverage ratio we have to find out interest coverage ratio in the last video i have explained you the formula for interest coverage ratio pbit divided by fixed interest charges PBIT stands for profit before interest and tax. So PBIT divided by fixed interest charges. This is the interest coverage ratio. So PBIT is not given in the problem. You have to remember the formula. PBIT is equal to PAT plus tax plus interest. Plus tax plus interest. So PBIT is equal to PAT plus tax plus interest. So already PAT is given 1 lakh 22 600 and we got the tax 122 600 interest 4800 the PBIT 2 lakh 50 thousand now easily we can calculate interest coverage ratio 2 lakh 50 thousand PBIT fixed interest charges 4800 52.08 times when we find the interest coverage ratio you should write times that means our PBIT is 52 times of interest paid. Our profit is 52 times of interest paid. This shows that the profitability of the business is very high. The creditor, the supplier of funds are ready to supply the funds because the profitability is very high. Next, fourth problem. From the following particulars, calculate coverage ratios two coverage ratios are there interest coverage ratio and dividend coverage ratio these two are called coverage ratios interest coverage ratio just now in the previous problem we have applied PBIT divided by fixed interest charges the dividend coverage ratio PAT divided by fixed preference dividend PAT divided by fixed preference dividend this is the formula for dividend coverage ratio now data given net profit after tax that means PAT, profit after tax. Then income tax is given, interest is given, preference, dividend is given. Everything is given. The only thing you have to remember the formula and substitute the values. So PBIT is equal to PAT plus tax plus interest. PAT is given 3 lakh, tax 2 lakh 52,000, interest 46,000. Add up, 5 lakh 98,000 is PBIT. Now substitute. Interest coverage ratio, PBIT divided by fixed interest charges. PBIT 5,98,000, interest charges are 46,000. So 13 times. That means our PBIT is 13 times of interest charges. That's it. Now dividend coverage ratio. The formula is PAT divided by fixed preference dividend. PAT is 3 lakh. In the fixed preference dividend is 32,000. So 3 lakh divided by 32,000, 9.375 times. This is the dividend coverage ratio that's all the fourth problem completed now we we'll come to the fifth problem Messrs Rakesh and company supplies you the following information for the year ending 31st December what information credit sales 1,50,000 cash sales 2,50,000 return inward return inward means sales return return inward means sales return that is 25,000 opening stock 25,000 closing stock 35,000 then find inventory turnover ratio when gross profit is 20%. Only one ratio you have to calculate inventory turnover ratio. The formula again, you have to remember the formula inventory turnover ratio or stock turnover ratio means same. We can call it as inventory turnover ratio or we can call it as stock turnover ratio. The formula is cost of goods sold cost of goods sold divided by average stock cogs divided by average stock so here inventory turnover ratio cost of goods sold cogs divided by average stock now we need cogs cogs not given in the problem so how to find out the cost of goods sold 
we need sales and gross profit. COGS is equal to net sales minus gross profit. Now net sales are not given, we have to find out net sales. How to find out net sales? Net sales is equal to credit sales plus cash sales minus return inward. Return inward means sales return. Return inward means sales return. So credit sales are given in the problem 150,000. Cash sales are given 250,000. Return inwards are given 25. So 150,000 plus 250 minus 25, 375,000 is the net sales. Net sales. Now GP ratio, gross profit ratio 20%. That means GP, gross profit is 20% of net sales. So 20% of 375,000. So gross profit 75,000. So we got the net sales. We got the gross profit. Net sales minus gross profit, you will get cost of goods sold. So COGS is equal to sales minus GP. Sales 375,000, GP 75,000. So COGS we got 3 lakh. Cost of goods sold 3 lakh. Now average stock. We need average stock. Average stock is equal to opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2. Opening stock is given 25,000, closing stock is given 35,000 divided by 2, 30,000 is the average stock. Over. Now simply you substitute in the formula. Inventory turnover ratio is equal to COGS by average stock. COGS how much? COGS 3 lakh. Average stock 30,000. 3 lakh divided by 30,000 10 times. Stock turnover ratio is 10 times. What does it mean? The stock is converted into sales 10 times in a year. It is good turnover. That means very fast we can be, the business can be able to convert the stock into sales very fast. If it is 6 or more, it will be good. So here 10. Very good. Now 6th problem. See the 6th one. The cost of goods sold by a firm in a year was 20 lakh. C-O-G-S. 20 lakh. It makes a profit. It makes a profit of 20% on sales. So GP ratio is 20%. If the stock at the beginning of the year was 4.5 lakh. 4.5 lakh means 4 lakh 40,000. And the closing stock was 5.5 lakh. 5 lakh 50,000. What is the stock turnover ratio? Exactly similar to the previous problem. Stock turnover ratio or inventory turnover ratio means one and the same. The form COGS is given the problem 20 lakh. Previous problem COGS was not given. We have calculated COGS by using the formula sales minus GP. But here directly COGS is given. Now gross profit is 20% of sales. We don't require GP ratio. GP ratio we don't require because COGS is given. Opening stock 4,50,000, closing stock 5,50,000. Stock turnover how much? So average stock, opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2. So 4 lakh 50 plus 5 lakh 50 divided by 2, 5 lakh rupees is the average stock. Now substitute stock turnover ratio formula COGS by average stock. COGS given in the problem 20 lakh. 20 lakh divided by 5 lakh, 4 times, that's all. So stock turnover ratio is 4 times in a year. That means very low compared to the previous problem 10 times. Now we have only 4 times. In one year only 4 times we can be able to convert the stock into sales. That means 4 times means every 3 months. Every 3 months we can be able to convert the stock into sales. It's very slow. That's it. So 6 problems. In this video I have completed 6 problems on ratio analysis. So if you are satisfied with my lecture, give a like to the video. Share my channel in your group, in your friend circle so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge. Give your comments on these videos and lastly don't forget to subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed. We'll continue the next problem in the next video.